Hey gang, this is Matt at Boosted Bronco Garage. Um, getting ready to do a series of how-to videos on our install kit. In times past, we've we focused primarily on showing some of the features of the kit and want to get down into the nuts and bolts of how to do this install. So first off, we're going to start with the transfer case and the shifter, uh, assembling this to the engine and getting it ready to go into the chassis. So let me flip the camera and I'll show you some details. All right, so here's our Dana 20 transfer case. This was freshly split, so it's all greasy and messy, but it, it'll suffice to show you what, what we've got going on here. So this is the spud shaft that connects to the transmission, and there's really no way to get a puller onto this. And so what I like to do is, when, when this is, is totally um, pressed up to the transfer case, I'll start with a, with a gasket scraper and I'll, I'll, I'll drive that in, get it to where it comes away just a little bit, and then progressive, you, progressively you, you start with you know, bigger and bigger screwdrivers to be able to, to wedge it in. And, and you can tap it from the side as, as you're wedging the screwdriver in and kind of walk it out with, uh, uh, with a dead blow hammer or drift or something like that. So that, that enables us to get this spud shaft piece out. The reason I mention this is because this gear that you see in place, that has to go onto the new spud shaft that comes with your advance adapters kit. So uh, just one, one bit of unique information for those who aren't familiar with the Dana 20 transfer case. You can see there's, what, 10, 10, 12, uh, uh, maybe even more um, roller bearings in there. And these, these roller be bearings move, move freely. So if you dump the transfer case over, those are gonna fall out, get down in the case, make a mess. And so when I'm working on this, I like it to either be in, you know, kind of flat position down like this or, or slightly up, just resting on the on the back yoke there to where those, those bearings stay in place. So now let's, uh, well, quickly. So this this has to come off. You can see a snap ring there on, on top. Um, this one's a, a split ring. Yep, you can see the start of it there. And so you just have to kind of work it out with a screwdriver, and and while you're while you're working it out of the groove, you lift up with another screwdriver on the back side. So it takes a little effort, but you'll get there. And then to to put it on, you know, it's much much easier with the taper that you see on the splines. So now moving over to this advanced adapters kit. So this this is the essentially the the comparable. Uh, parts that come with the advanced adapters kit. So this this spline is spline count is different and diameter is different to mate up to the the 6 or 80 or 10 or 80 than your standard um, C4 trans or you know uh, other other type of transmission. So this this piece is is similar to what you see on the original um, you know, spud shaft setup. This one's aluminum versus this one being steel, but still, you know, similar things, all rings to keep the oil in. Now, when this when this goes together, this has a sealed bearing instead of, of the open bearing on, on the prior setup, which is fine. Sealed bearing's okay. Um, so what I like to do is is I like to press this bearing onto this spud shaft first. And then once, once you get that pressed on, uh, you can even install the, the gear on, on this spud shaft and put the snap ring back in place right here. Once that's done, then, then this drops in, in here and you, you essentially press this aluminum collar onto the, uh, onto the bearing and then install this snap ring in, in this area there internally. So everything's got to be pretty tight. The tolerances are fairly tight to get these snap rings to seat. So once once that's in place, this this goes back into the the Dana 20 trans, and and that happens first. Uh, that part goes in first, and then let's see. I'm just gonna grab my ring. Then what happens is this adapter ring goes goes in place next. You can see this dot um, that's been uh, spot drilled into the top of the, the piece there near where the numbers are. And so 
Uh, the kit comes with with six Allen head bolts that go in those countersunk locations. So once that, uh, I'm just using the old style, but once this is in the new style, then this adapter ring goes over the top with um, with this this spot drilled location being up. They call it 10 o'clock position. So that's roughly how the transfer case is going to be clocked. Is is somewhat close to that, maybe a little bit flatter. Um, so now one thing to note about a Dana 20 transfer case, these are through holes. And so to prevent oil from leaking, a gasket's provided for this surface, but these, these threaded through holes in order to prevent oil from seeping through, you need to use some kind of uh, thread sealant, silicone or, or otherwise when, when you're doing that and, and they need to be you know, cleaned up where the silicone will adhere to prevent oil from migrating through. So that, that goes on, that, that's the transfer case side. Then um, on the, let's see, on the transmission side, this, let me just move some parts here for a sec. So this is, this is the transfer case adapter here, and this bolts onto, uh, onto the back side of the transmission in this location here, okay? So how I like to do this, uh, there's no gasket on, on this surface, and so the, the only thing that needs to, to go on before you, before you bolt this up is the kit will come, the kit will come with, uh, Oh, let's see. There's a roll pin that you can see maybe right in here. So there's a roll pin that needs to go into this location here. And that's a locator. I'm sure it would be fine if it didn't get there. But but we want that to, to be there for ease of installation and, and such. So you can see, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, nine bolts. Um, this is what I like to use on this. The factory uses aluminum uh, bolts, um, oddly enough, and I believe that's for galvanic corrosion and, and other things, but they're quite expensive. And so uh, what I like to do is just put some anti-seize or, or whatnot on the surface and, and just use steel uh, washer head bolts. So one, one thing to note here, is for for a couple of these they've got a bit of a unique uh, challenge and so this this bolt here specifically if you're if the head on your washer head bolt is uh, is the size of of these that i had um, then you're going to need to sand down the the outer washer head portion portion just a bit i i've got a lathe so i chucked it up in a lathe to where it will fit in but um if you have the standard one, it, it won't go in. <clears throat> so that's one of them. I like to install this one first because it enables you to, you know, if you wiggle it around and, and get it to poke through the, the back side there, then uh, and you, you should have just enough room to be able to fit a, a socket on that will enable you to, to guide that in, in place and, and then tighten. The other challenging one, and I, I forget, maybe I've mentioned this at various times in the past. The other challenging one is, is getting this bolt into, into this location here. And so the, the method I like to use when installing this one is I'll grind, uh, I'll grind a flat on, on one spot on the washer head bolt. And then you, you put it so that that flat's resting right against this location here. And then with a, a couple of taps of a hammer, this, this pops through. Otherwise, if you're using washer head bolts, you just you can't get it in place. And so I like to install these two first. So this one, this one here, and then this one here first. Have them poking through and get those started and it enables you to, to do the install for, uh, for it much, much easier than if you try and do those last. So that's, that's what I like to do. Um, let's, so this, this has the, the transfer case clocked in, in the right position. Um, let me just make one, one quick note here. So on, 
the on this adapter you can see that there's there's two sets of holes okay so make note of of that on on the adapter for for this stock uh transfer excuse me the the stock frame where we're not extra wide on the frame the position that i like to use to provide enough clearance is um i like if you're facing uh backwards i like to be uh, the one that's that's more more rotated counterclockwise and then as we roll around to see the the threaded spots on this so this this one on the back side that was more counterclockwise coming from this other direction then we like to position it in the one that's uh that's furthest here counterclockwise looking forward and that enables you to clock it appropriately so one um, one bit of, of interesting information for installing these. Um, what I like to do is use a ratcheting end wrench. These are just incredible for tight spaces like this where you can't get a, a socket and a, and a ratchet in. And so this ratcheting end wrench just enables you to do a lot of cool stuff. So I uh, would suggest that. Now, as we move to, to the installation of the shifter, uh, this is gonna take me a little more time to, to go through and describe, but essentially this, um, this aftermarket twin stick shifter, I source these from a, <clears throat> from a supplier who does a pretty good job and they're made in stainless. So with, uh, with brass, uh, uh, porous brass bushings that are pre-lubricated in here, so they're a pretty solid setup, and these are specific to the 6 or 80, 10 or 80 swap. Um, they attach to the, to the transmission and, and transfer case adapter using these two bolts. And then they, they uh, attach um, to these shift rods linkages um, via... <clears throat> via these parts that, that come with them as well. So these swivel joints. And the way I like to, to set these up is, and, and you have to take some measurements here. So what I've got is the transfer case shifted in the neutral position for both the, the front and, and the rear. And then when it's, when it's shifted in the neutral position, you can kind of see the extent of the travel uh, when, when it shifted with the rail being furthest back. And so you can see the extent of the travel here. So what I like to do is when using this particular setup, I like to measure a half inch forward from, from the, the, the end of, of the transfer case housing when, when, the, when the shift rod would have been in that furthest back position. So, so I've pulled that forward. We go another half inch forward. And that's that's where we <clears throat> where we use our center punch and and knock a hole that's roughly normal to this surface, so straight out from from that surface on both of them. So have done the same measurement up here on this one. So half inch in from that that uh, 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 outermost position, and then you go another half inch up, and that's where you're going to cut these off. And so the the same. The same directions apply, whether it's a J-shift or a T-shift transfer case. Essentially, you're gonna cut these shift rods off at, at one inch from, from that um, rearward uh, backstop position. So now these are, these are hardened. If you try and drill with a standard drill bit, you're just gonna smoke the drill bit. So what I like to do is uh, once I get a, a good center punch, sometimes I'll grind a bit of a flat on the surface to where you can do a, a good center punch mark and, and not have it slip. Um, but I'll, I'll put a, a carbide um, four flute uh, ball end mill in a, in a die grinder and, and use some lubricant and guide it through, through that way. That's, that's been uh, successful for me. So, and then at that point, I, I will install these rods uh, it's a quarter inch hole on on the rods on both ends and with the with the quarter inch hole through there uh, with that ball end mill the four flute carbide it enables you to to cut through it pretty <clears throat> pretty successfully 
So now I did mention that I'll grind a flat on, on those sometimes to enable a, a good seating surface and, and such. Um, just be careful that you don't grind too far back and get into the surface that needs to be sealed. Now you can get aftermarket uh, shift rods for these that already have the, the hole and, and such in, in the setup. This is just if you don't want to pull the transfer case down if it's been freshly rebuilt or whatnot. And, and you can use the existing shift rods and, and adapt them that way. Now, one of the things that I have seen is with uh, the higher torque coming out of these EcoBoost swap engines, uh, putting in a stiffer detent spring oftentimes helps and you can get adjustable detent spring kits for these Dana 20 transfer cases that enable you to kind of dial it in. And so that's, that's what I like to do. Um, I'm going to pause the camera and, and get these drilled and, and cut and, and show you the next step. All right, now you can see kind of the final stage of this, this assembly. So we've got our, again, just as a review, we've got our inch away from the furthest tucked in position. We split that distance, so half inch from, from the end and drill a quarter inch hole and you'll have to use again a, a carbide bed or a carbide you know, ball end mill to be able to drill through this hardened steel. And uh, again, I, I, uh, I like to put a, a flat there. It helps when you're, when you're hitting it to, <clears throat> with a center punch to get ready to drill. And then I like to chamfer off the edge just a little bit too because uh, when you go to put these, <clears throat> these swivel ends, these hind joints uh, in, it provides the clearance to be able to to where they don't bind up and, and such. So um, let me just plug this guy in and I'll I'll show you the last last little bit I wanted to take you through with this video. Whoop. Needed two hands there for a second. All right, so what I like to do is have these, when they're in the neutral position, be at about the vertical up at the installed angle of the drivetrain, and, and the drivetrain's gonna angle down just a bit, so they're pitched forward just slightly. So if I were to tighten these guys up, you'd see that they, that they shift pretty well. Um, one last unique thing with, with this setup, as you can see from a driver's seat position, that, that this one's, uh, can it over just to the left a bit and, and this one's over to the right a bit. This is going to be too wide to fit into your hole that's in the, the tunnel. And so what I like to do is sometimes it depends on, on the vehicle and whether the install is a 10 or 80 or a 6 or 80 because the 10 or 80 is just a pinch longer and it positions these back just a little bit. But sometimes when I get these in, for the specific application, I'll I'll put a little heat to the to the area down here and tweak them just a little bit to get them exactly where I want them. I've even had an instance where I would trim uh, trim down here, cut about a half inch out of it, and and pull it back just a little bit. So you can take that up in in enlarging the the hole that goes through the tunnel as well. But I hope that gives you a good feel for what it takes to be able to put this adapter uh, set up on, on the 6R80 or 10R80 as well as the shifter and go to the Dana 20 Trans. The, the Dana kit instructions aren't all that good and so it, it helps to, to see it in, in action. Um, as always, uh, if you've got questions or comments, please reach out to us, comment on the channel or reach out to us via boostedbroncogarage at gmail.com. We'd love to sell you some parts or do an install for you. Thanks, and we'll talk next time.